Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine and this is Raspberry Reads. Uh, if you're new here, then uh, welcome to my channel. Um, I'm really glad that you stopped by. Um, if you like my content, then please hit the subscribe button and maybe leave a little comment down below introducing yourself and what sorts of books you enjoy reading most. So today I'd like to, to share with you some of the books um, that I've read that have the most memorable moments. So what I mean by this is um, books that have sort of had a lasting impact on me um, as a whole, but more so in the book itself had a very particular moment that's just sort of been ingrained in my mind um, since I read it. And many of these books has been years since I've read them and I still think about them a lot. Um, and I'd really encourage you to share in the comments uh, what some of the most memorable books for you are, um, both in uh, overall as a reading experience but the specific moments of that book um, that have stuck in your mind so um, yeah let's get into it so the first book I have um, to share with you today is a YA book that I read uh, when I was um, probably around 12 13 years old and this is uh, Children of the River by Linda Crew um, and so this book is it follows um, a teenager so the protagonist was the same age as me as when I when I read the book um, and it's about a girl from Cambodia who has to flee um, because of the Cambodian genocide the um, Khmer, Khmer Rouge um, army um, so yeah she flees Cambodia and she goes to live in Oregon in the United States um, and I, I just remember it being very memorable because it was the first time I'd read a book um, about such a, a difficult topic, so about genocide. It was about a girl who's the same age as me and she was going through a very similar experience. So she had um, uh, moved to the US and was just starting high school. So the particular moment of that book that really sticks in my mind is there was a scene where she was at the um, changing room in her high school and she felt very uncomfortable getting changed in front of the other um, girls and I think it was using the showers at the same time and it was basically all about just this culture shock and how um, different cultures um, look at nudity differently um, and she came from a very modest background and yeah so that is a mem memorable moment for me and I to this day you know I've read that book what, 20 years ago and, or more and I still think of that scene of her being so uncomfortable and um, overwhelmed by this unfamiliar culture of an American high school. So yes that's the first book that um, is a memorable moment. The second book um, and we're going back even further to when I was in maybe second grade, third grade um, and the book is called A Ghost in the Castle by uh, Sigrid Hank, um, and this is a children's book. And the reason why this book is memorable is because I had to memorize it. Um, so I can't remember the context of this. I think it might have been for um, in celebration of World Book Day, but I remember we were tasked to recite um, a a book, um, a children's book, um, in front of the class. It's sort of like a show and tell type vibe. Um, so I picked this book. Um, uh, spoiler, the, the ghost is actually an owl in the castle. Um, but yes, to this day, I just remember, I don't remember the, the actual words for the book, but I remember just having to practice over and over and over again um, and being so anxious about um, presenting this book in front of everybody. Um, I can't remember if I had to recite it from memory. I think I was able to bring the book with me, but I was supposed to be able to um, to narrate it quite uh, fluidly. Um, and yeah, for you know a little one only in sort of grade two or three, that was a lot. Um, so yeah, don't if you're a teacher, don't make your children do that. That was very overwhelming and it's obviously stuck in my mind as a memorable moment um, to this day. Uh, the third book, so moving away from children's books for a moment, is Jurassic Park by Michael Crichton. So, I mean, I love the film Jurassic Park. It's one of my favorites. I watch it at least once a year. Um, but back when I was doing my master's degree, I was house sitting and I decided to listen to the audiobook of Jurassic Park. 
Uh, so I was, the context, I was in an unfamiliar environment and I was listening to kind of a frightening audiobook, right? And the bit that sticks out in my mind and sort of haunts me to this day is um, with the velociraptors and um, how they kind of had escaped and it's slightly diff the book is slightly different to the film but yeah the, the velociraptors were on the loose and I remember just lying in this unfamiliar bed thinking oh my gosh they're going to come and get me um, and had nightmares for weeks after that and so that um, scene with the velociraptors still sticks in my mind. Um, if you like Jurassic Park but you haven't read um, the book then I definitely recommend reading the book or listening to it but just be prepared that uh, it might spook you as much as it did me. Uh, next we're moving to um, a piece of short fiction, a sh short story, um, and this is The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman um, and this is quite a well-known work of um, fiction, short, um, a short story uh, from the late 19th century in the, in the US and it's essentially about a woman whose husband is a, um, a therapist or a physician and he feels that she's suffering from mental health conditions but hysteria um, as it was known of, as at that time and she was sort of secluded in this room with yellow wallpaper. Um, and without giving it away, the bit that sticks in my mind is just the ending of it and how tense it was um, and this just sort of sinking feeling, like this visceral reaction I had to finding out what happened um, at the end of the story. So yes, that short story, The Yellow Wallpaper, has um, definitely earned a place as a book with a memorable moment for me. Um, next, I don't have... Um, my copy with me. I wish I did, but it's up, it's up in the loft so I can't get it. Um, but this is uh, a book called The Great Plains um, by Jeff Kunfer. And this is, so this is a, um, an academic uh, work of um, environmental history. And it's actually by um, a, an academic who, who taught me during my master's degree in Canada. And, yeah, and so The Great Plains um, by Jeff Kunfer is essentially, as the name suggests, it is the history, an environmental history of the Great Plains in the US, um, which was all very, very interesting. I took it, um, read it as part of an environmental history course during my master's degree. Um, but the memorable moment was this chapter about um, fires when the uh, agricultural fields would be on fire. And this was back in the ninth early 1900s I think I can't remember the exact time and context but yeah so the fields are on fire and what they did at that time was um, kill a cow and open the cow's body up and then drag the body behind a tractor to smother the flames and yeah you know when you're just reading something and then that's that image just gets ingrained in you. And so that's a memorable moment for me. I just uh, periodically, it'll just pop into my mind in the day. It's like, mm, yeah, I remember that time you read a book about a cow being killed and opened in half and then dragged across a burning field. So there you go. That's a, um, a memorable moment that maybe will stick in your mind now. Um, okay, moving on to something a little bit uh, less horrific have swimming lessons um, and I, sorry, I need to refer to the full title so this is swimming lessons and other other stories from uh Frosica Barg um, and this is by Rohinton Mystery so um this is a collection of, of short stories but um the swimming lessons in particular is one that I remember um I read this as part of an English literature course during my undergraduate and um, I hadn't really had much experience reading um, short stories before. This is one of the first ones I ever read, so maybe it sticks in my mind for that reason. But the bit that I remember the most about this story, so for context, this is um, a collection of short stories set in um, what was known as Bombay and at an, an apartment complex. Um, and the, yeah, the bit that sticks in my mind is um, that like, the descriptions of the kitchen and making an egg curry. Um, I had never heard of consuming egg curry before 
And so yeah, that is just a moment that sticks in my mind from, from reading swimming lessons, egg curry. Moving on to another piece of nonfiction. So this is Underland by Robert McFarlane, a really well-known book. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, probably one of my favorite works of nonfiction uh, ever. Um, and there's so many bits of that book that are memorable. Um, but if I had to pick two from that book, um, there's a chapter where Robert McFarlane talks about going um, into the tunnels uh, where they do sort of physics experiments. Um, is it atoms or lasers? I can't remember. I think it has to do with like atoms. Um, but yes, it's deep, deep underground. Um, and this feeling of, um, I think there was descriptions of like the walls were starting to collapse in on themselves and you just really got this sense of um, how deep underground he was and how very quickly things could go wrong um, from that chapter so that was a memorable moment and then the second part which was more of a sad one um, was when he was looking at uh, the underground areas where there were um, mass graves from the Second World War. I think it was in Poland. Um, I can't remember exactly where it was, but yes, that was a very emotional um, chapter, uh, quite you know, sad and depressing to think about um, all those people who lost their lives in, in that particular way and how their, their bodies were treated um, so, so poorly. Um, and yes, yeah, so those were their two particular chapters. Um, that are memorable for me from from Underland. If you haven't read Underland yet, I really recommend it. It's it's a wonderful book. Um, all right, so the next books we're moving back to fiction, and this is Solar by Ian McEwan. Um, and I read this book because I bought a secondhand copy, and I was going to gift it to my dad for Christmas, but I wasn't I wasn't sure that he was going to like it, so I wanted to read it first just to check. Um, and so I read it and I thought it was, was brilliant. Um, so, so funny. Um, and I believe my dad subsequently enjoyed it as well. Um, but the bit that's the memorable moment for me, and it was such a, just like chest kiss, uh, bit of writing is, um, a description of the main character whose name is Michael Beard. Um, and so he's a, a physicist and he's, a very unlikable character sort of like just an absolute mess and you kind of like love to hate him I don't know it's like a mixed mixed relationship with how I feel about him um, but yes there's this one particular scene that I still think of and laugh uh, to myself about and it was a scene where he's sitting on um, on a train and um, across from another uh, passenger and he has a bag of crisps, potato chips, um, and he's like munching on them and the, the other passenger is looking at him with just like this weird expression, like sort of like astonishment and disbelief. Um, and he, uh, Michael Beard just gets really like um, sort of an inner monologue, just really obsessed with why this passenger is looking at him in that particular way. And then it transpires that um, he was actually eating the other passenger's snack, um, thinking that it was his own. So on the face of it, that doesn't sound very memorable or remarkable at all, but it was the way that it was written was just so cringy. So I'm going to date myself a little bit, but every time I think about that scene, I think of like, you know, awkward, awkward turtle. Um, and yeah, it was just so horribly awkward. So quintessentially British um, that it was, yeah, just the most memorable moment um, in a book that I've read in a long time. And the last book, and I feel like I might have saved the best for last. So the last book is called Through a Glass Darkly by Carleen Cohen. Um, and this was the second book in a series, although I only ever read the one book. Um, and yeah, this is a memorable book because I read it when I was 15 or 16. Uh, if you've read it, you might be thinking, oh, okay. Um, so this is definitely an adult book. Um, it is historical fiction, um, set in, I think it's the 18th century. And I don't remember a whole lot about it. 
um, other than it was very steamy, very risque. Um, and so this was one of the first books that I had picked out in the adult section of the bookstore, so chap chapters in Canada. Um, and my dad bought it for me and I just thought, oh, it's like an 18th century romance. That's going to be so cute. And I'm going to try and read like the big kid book, right? And then, um, how do I say this in a like PG sort of way? There were many people having romantic encounters together at the same time. And I had never encountered uh, such graphic descriptions before. And um, yeah, so it's memorable because it just, it reminds me f fondly of my dad um, being very open-minded and buying me basically whatever book I wanted um, when we went uh, to the bookshop together. And if only he could see this now and realize that he had bought his 16 year old daughter some very raunchy material, which was not age appropriate in the slightest. Um, but yes, so that's a memorable moment that I don't, I don't remember what that book was about, but I remember with vivid detail some of those uh, romantic scenes, let's say. Um, but yeah, so those are all the books that I wanted to share today that um, have memorable moments for me. Um, so yeah, as you can see, that wasn't necessarily like the whole book that was memorable, but it was like a, a moment in time or a specific aspect of the book that's uh, so memorable for me. Um, so yeah, I'd really uh, love for you to share with me what some of your memorable books um, are or memorable moments in books, I should say. Um, so feel free to share below, um, or if you're a booktuber, then um, this isn't really a tag, but I, you know, maybe make um, a video like this for yourself so I can see uh, in, in long form what you have to say. Um, so thanks so much for, for joining me today, and I hope you're all well, and I'll see you soon in a new video. Bye!